Jack London's White Fang. Let's get this started with. Now, of course, today we're actually going to have to do the review. So let's click our pen and start writing our reports. All right, class, first agenda on the list. Today, we're going to go ahead and talk about the story itself. The pup who survived. All right, so White Fang, of course, you actually remember as the puppy who went ahead and became survived. It's basically about a wild wolf goes ahead and becomes domesticated. I mean, he's one quarter dog, so that'll work. That, that, he mean, that, that means he could be tamed. In fact, the very first domesticated dogs were just tamed wolves. So that goes ahead and shows that who can go ahead. And so these pups start happening, and these pup goes, and there's, there's this pup named the Great Kid, and then he goes ahead, and he's the only one who actually survived among his pup, fellow puppies, brothers and sisters. His dad died while on the hunting trip, and his mom is the only one who can provide for him now. And they go ahead, fight, and then he go, they go ahead and actually fight their way for survival. They go ahead, and he learns how to like this meat rule you eat or you get eaten eat or you get eaten those kinds of things the next thing that he knows is all this review and all this puppy stuff goes ahead and he decides to become an actual wolf with all that stuff out of the way he goes ahead and decides to become domesticated well he didn't decide his mom did because she's hungry and the only way they can get themselves fed is to become a domesticated again and of course with that he learns how to be cruel, he learns that humans are cruel, but some humans are like rare occasions are really acting really nice and they don't care about other they don't really care about these racial inequalities and everything. They just care that every human being is a human being and that every human being has rights unless they're pretty much a beast. Right. So of course that all works out. He just sacrifices himself to just save his master's father. And that's just a start. Alright, so what happens next is they're pretty much great. Of course, I'm going to have to compare this to The Call of the Wild. The Call of the Wild is just the co actually, like, the White Fang is actually written as a companion novel for Call of the Wild, The Call of the Wild. And a lot of other other times, this story itself actually goes ahead and became, became international fame. In fact, it's because of Call of the Wild, what Jack London is very famous. And it's only because of that novel that Jack London is actually a very well-known celebrity in, and also a really respected one, and also became the highest paid writer and author in all of America, at least during his time when he was, like, when he was still alive. He lived to be until 40. He lived until he was, like, 40 years old. Next thing that he knows is that all this actually works out. Also, there are, like, it's like a really good companion novel for Call of the Wild. It's also a really good one for Seawolf. Now, but all of them actually center around the wolf. And, however, the Call of the Wild is actually the one that's actually probably more, the more resonant one, the one that's actually most attached to it, most, like, familiar to people. If you've read the Call of the Wild, then you'll probably be familiar with White Fang. Except in this case, Call, Call of the Wild is about a domesticated dog, and that dog goes ahead and tries and is taught how to be wild. And he basically lives in the wild of a man, and then that man just finds a bunch of gold, and then that gold is, like, done with some things. And he goes, that man dies, the man dies, and then next thing that he knows is that, well, Buck, our main character of Call of the Wild, who becomes wild, has a few, has a few, uh, has a mate, and they, and he has a family, and he basically becomes wild, but he goes ahead and visits his master's place every year the day he died. As in a vital or anniversary, death, happy 50th death anniversary. I um, actually doubt that dogs can live that long, but he's loyal to the end, no doubt. As for Jack London's White Fang, it's a complete opposite. It's about a wolf who goes ahead and becomes domesticated. It's about how the wolf goes into domestication, how he hates humans and everything, and how he had to go through and sacrifice a bunch of his instincts for just so that he could be what he is now. Right now, he basically is the father of, I believe, five, six, and of course, with that, he goes ahead and has a lot of love and everything. Also, he does not know he's a father yet. He's never going to have to worry about hunting for them, so as he always imagined, because apparently there's food on the table right now. So that's a kind of a shame, to be honest. Because now that he's domesticated, it's kind of a shame that there's no more wild, wild puppies out there anymore. At least now, they're at least like, I don't know. What, what like There's like a quarter of a dog. There's a one times a quarter of a dog. So that's like still technically a quarter of a dog. Except in this case that it just halved. So it's an eighth of a dog. And then there's a hat. So I guess it will be one fifth, one half plus one eighth. And that equals to five apes dog. That makes zero sense. That's like, oh, that's actually terrible to be honest. So they're basically just but five apes dog now, and the rest three apes they're wild. Half 
At least half of them is wild, and the other half, three quarters of it is wild. Like, like three quarters are wild, and the other, and then the remaining one quarter is the domestication part, and then the rest of half is domestication too. So, unfortunately for Jack London's White Fang, his puppies are going to grow up very domesticated. Yeah. Well, then again, he's also domesticated now, and also he'll probably teach them the same loyalty that he found. That, that he, not all humans are mean, also, some humans are mean, and be wary, be suspicious, everyone. Everyone is sus! That's about it. Now is my complaint. So there's this person who wrote a review about the 2018 Netflix movie called White Fang. And that person said, that movie is the worst movie in 2018. And I'm like, what the hell does this guy mean? It's actually a pretty fun movie. I watched it like the first hour of it. It's great. I haven't finished it yet because it's like, yeah. You'll figure it out. You, why do you think I make content in the middle of the night? That goes ahead and works out a lot of things too. This movie's business goes ahead, and that person actually said a bunch of reasons why that movie is like the worst one ever. Like, like no, like one of his first reasons, like, no one wants to watch a movie about your dog. And like, bro, wow, this person wants to w make a movie about their own dog, bro. And I actually kind of have to agree with him because. Well, it kind of sounds seems selfish too. Also, it also said that it was very unoriginal from the book. Also, it was actually strided against from the book too. That it was very different from the book, and I have to agree, it was different from the book. Also, I think he was different in a good way. Jack London was actually pretty racist in this in this book too. Like when the Indian great beaver game drunk, it was like a stereotype that Indians are stupid and those other things too, which is why people actually hated Indians because of these stereotypes. But then later on, they actually this 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 movie itself actually showed all the prejudice against. This Indian and that Indians back then were pretty darn prejudiced against too. It's also a really good way to actually show kids about a uh, kids about racism and to go ahead and not discriminate. Also, that's what Zootopia is for. But I think that this one is also pretty good too. The story is also pretty good too. And also, I think the movie made it pretty good for making changes. Also, the complaints about not being able to see the action scenes. It's an animation, for heaven's sake. Kids are going to watch it. Do you think five-year-olds should watch Avengers Infin Infinity War and Avengers Endgame? Of course not. But then again, I watched that when I was like eight. <laughs> Big mistake. Then again, I watched my first Marvel movie when I was like seven, six? And that was Iron Man 1. So I guess you could technically watch fight scenes as long as you're five. I mean, my, my PE teacher slash advisor's daughter, apparently, she told me the story, is three years old. And she does not even know her letters and numbers yet. She's three years old. However, somehow she's able to log in the computer. And my friend, com like one of my classmates commented, Monkey see, monkey do. It's kind of scary how little kids nowadays can figure out how to use a password even though they can't read the password. It's actually kind of creepy too, and it goes ahead and goes and watch Netflix and YouTube, scrolls through the page, and of course, the of course, my PE teacher's kind of terrified by this, and so says, "All right, Cinderella's gonna be on TV for five hour for the next two hours." No, I don't want Cinderella. I want to watch something else. Well, yeah, you can do something else, but on TV it'll be Cinderella for the next two hours. I don't know what's gonna happen next, but it's Cinderella now, and it goes ahead and she just does something else. Of course, she hates Cinderella for some reason. It's cringy. In my opinion, is pretty cringy. All right. So, of course, the movie itself, I don't actually think there's a bunch of bad things about the movie, too. Sure, it's different from the story. And Call of the Wild, the movie 2020, is actually different from this story, too. But just because we don't see a bunch of action stories, action scenes, that doesn't mean that it's a terrible movie. In fact, I actually think it was great because great that they didn't show the action scenes because then we had to imagine it ourselves through the sounds and wolves. And also, we actually see from the pups, we see from White Fang's perspective, not... Not Keech's perspective. If it was, I would have a different movie entirely. But we see it in White Fang's perspective. The book itself doesn't even show what Keech, how Keech fought. So they, I actually kind, I was kind of disappointed about the fact that they missed the part in the book where like White Fang went ahead and bit the, uh, bit the, the cat. I think like beat the wild animals, the other wild animals leg, and hung on, which actually saved his m mom from a bunch of damage. I actually wanted that to be in the movie, and unfortunately, they didn't put it. Of course, I would have been very brave and heroic of them, but then, of course, I think they had to consider about the miners. Ugh. So, yeah. I do have to complain that it's actually... I, I do have to complain that it's actually not as very accurate as the book itself, but I also have to actually compliment on it that it's not as not as good as the book. Not as copy. It's not, not a copy of the book itself, too, because there are a bunch of racist things inside it, too, as I already mentioned. And that's about it. That's it.
So hopefully you guys actually did enjoy this episode. I really hope you guys did. And until next time, Shana, peace. Bye-bye.